Wayne said that I said about the ladies, but I meant it in a good way. <laughs> they always take care, they're great to take care of things like this, and I'll just be in the way, so I'll do what I can to help, but uh, the ladies will see that it's taken care of, and I appreciate that so much. Let's bow for a prayer. Our Father, we're thankful for an opportunity to be here this morning, to be a part of this worship assembly. And now we take a few moments to study your word, to look at a very important subject, Father, and to realize how much you've loved us and the things that you've done for us. Go with us now through this day. Be with us as we again study your word. Give us the commitment, Father, or may we get the commitment through your word to be obedient. In, your, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The subject we're going to broach this morning is extremely important. There seems to be a, quite a question on uh, the answer to this question. I know what men say. I've heard what man says. But what does the Bible say when it talks about is everyone going to heaven? You know, if you ask a Calvinist, he says there's going to be 144,000 to be saved. You ask a universalist, he says everyone will be saved. Of course, what we want to do is look at what the Bible said, what the Bible teaches, because that's how we're going to be judged. This morning, first of all, if you were to come up to 10 people on the street of Rising Star and ask them what you must do to be saved, probably six out of the ten will have different answers. That's why today religion is so confusing. Because there's so many different answers to, to questions that people have about religion. But that's why we don't need to go to men to ask that question. We need to go to the Father. We need to go to the Bible. Let the Bible answer these questions for us. Now, according to the Bible, who will be saved? That's what we, got. we have to ask ourselves. Who then will be saved? Well, first of all, we're going to be saved by grace. Ephesians 2, 5, saved by grace. Later on it will say we're saved by grace through faith. Not of ourselves as a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we're saved by God's grace. Okay? Well, we know that God's grace encapsulates several things. Like the coming of Christ. John 3, verse 17. We find out it's through Jesus Christ where we're going to be saved. It's by Him and through Him that we're going to be saved. We also read we're going to be saved through the gospel. Romans 1, verse 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to all who believe the Jew first and also the Gentiles. Now, this is what the Bible tells us about our salvation and how we're going to be saved. The next verse that talks about our salvation is by faith. Luke 7 and verse 50. Jesus talked about the fact that it's going to be our faith that's going to save us. Our belief, our acceptance that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Again, I go to Ephesians 2 verse 8. Saved by grace through faith. The next step, by confessions. 
Romans 10 verse 9, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All of these is a part of the process of salvation. Those who have done these things that we've looked at so far and the rest will be saved. Now, up to this point, generally, most people will be in agreement. But the next point, for some reason, seems to be controversial. And I don't really understand why, because there is as much on this subject as there is any other subject of the New Testament. In fact, it was Jesus himself when he gave the Great Commission to go into all the world to every creature, baptizing them in Matthew's account in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Mark's account, baptizing, baptizing them unto salvation. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that disbelieveth shall be condemned. Now, we see a reference to that in Acts chapter 8 when the, when the eunuch was driving along and Philip had been teaching Jesus to him. As they went by water, he said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Jesus says, Nothing if you believe. You see, without faith, baptism is nothing but a good wedding. You have to have faith. But then again with that faith in the Great Commission is accompanied by baptism. And again, that was part of the Great Commission and to illustrate its importance you go to Acts chapter 2 the first gospel sermon ever preached and what did they preach? They preached Jesus. They preached His death, burial, and resurrection. Then what did they preach? They preached baptism for remission of sins. When they cried out, Men and brothers, what must we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. So, so you've got repentance there in baptism. A necessary, important part of the salvation process. And for the right reason. First of all, it has to be in faith. It has to be through the confession. And it has to be for the remission of sins. Now, when we get to that point, what happens? Here's another controversial subject, and one which many, many religious leaders of the day and religious followers of the day would disagree, but this is what the scriptures say. After that, Acts 2, verse 47, those who had received the word Daily the Lord was adding to the church those which should be saved. The church isn't important. Well, what do we find out here? The church is what the saved were added to. Now turn to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 5 verse 23. I want you to look at this. Once again, for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church and the Savior of the body. What body? What body was the saved add to? The church. He is the Savior of that body. There is no salvation outside of the church. The church that Jesus died for. Again, Ephesians 5.25. Now, we asked the question earlier, is everyone going to heaven? Again, let's look at what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what I think, but what the Bible says. Not everyone, Matthew 7, verse 21. You might want to turn there. We're going to use this passage again, but for right now. Matthew 7, 21. 
Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. If someone is crying out, Lord, Lord, does that not signify belief? Do they not believe? And here's the surprise. They thought they had done what was necessary for salvation. And yet, what did Jesus say? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You see, not everyone is going to be saved. In fact, not everyone who believes is going to be saved. Even the devils believe and tremble. James chapter 2. So we know they're not going to be saved. Matthew 7 verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Unfortunately, the scriptures tell us that there's only going to be a few that's going to be saved. Now, I want you to understand something. This is not a God problem. God sent His Son to this earth, shed His blood to redeem us by our acceptance of the gospel plan of salvation that we just talked about. It belongs to Jesus. And this is what was given to us that we might save ourselves from this perverse generation. Acts 2, 42. With that in mind, if we don't follow the will and the pattern that God has given to us, will He accept us? Well, number one, remember, Jesus died for that plan. He shed His blood for that plan. The Father expects us to obey that plan. And through that plan, we're added to the church. Now, it's not a God problem, as I've mentioned. Here's the problem. Matthew 23, 37. Jesus cries out to Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. What's the problem then? Man is not willing. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us that all should come to repentance. Now, he that endures to the end shall be saved, Jesus said in Matthew 10, 22. Once we're baptized, it's not a matter of a good wedding and then forgetting what our responsibilities are. We have to be faithful unto death. Revelation 2 verse 10. You might want to do a word study on that word faithful sometimes. Why won't many be saved? First of all, there's a lot of deception going on in this world today. A lot of religious deception. Many will say that any religion will suffice. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through me. The only religion that's going to suffice is the religion that was instituted by Jesus Christ as the way. Truth is in Him. He tells us we will be judged by His Word. Therefore, we need to pay attention to His Word. 
Men likes to give their opinions on things, especially on politics and religion. But when it comes to religion, folks, men's opinions is not going to save us. It's got to be the Word of God. There's a lie that says all you have to do is believe. Well, Matthew 7, 21, we find out that's not true either. Those folks believed. Even the devils believe and tremble. Don't believe that. We have responsibilities. And they, these responsibilities is a reason why a lot of people are going to be lost. All God wants for me is to be happy. That is one of the biggest lies. I wish I could tell you how many times I have heard that across my desk. God just wants me to be happy. It don't matter what you do, God just wants me to be happy. No. God wants you to be faithful, not happy. Now, not happy in the sense that we use that word. I want to tell you something. If you are faithful, you're going to have joy. But this is the kind of joy that goes beyond being happy. You know, we're happy if everything goes our way. But the minute something doesn't go our way, we get unhappy. The joy I'm talking about goes even through those times when things aren't going our way. I mean, here is the Apostle Paul in prison, probably shackled to a Roman soldier and with other prisoners, and he writes to the church of Philippi and says, Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. The word is a command word. It's not a suggestion. How do we, how do we rejoice in the midst of a prison cell? Because of our relationship with Christ. It doesn't matter as long as I'm sincere. Folks, sincerity does not take a lie and make it the truth. God wants obedience. What's well, heartbreaking, and it is heartbreaking. I'm sure that God almost sheds a tear every time he thinks about the people who in sincerity <clears throat> believes these lies and puts their confidence in what a man says and not what his word says. That's why Jesus cried over Jerusalem. He looked over at that city that rejected him that wouldn't listen to his words. <clears throat> Though he would have gathered them like a chicken would gather her little fledglings and tenderly bring them to his breast, they wouldn't. Some of them were steeped sincerely in Judaism, but they wouldn't come to Jesus. Sometimes it's a matter of they do not want to share God's values. 1 John 2 says the pride of life. God has given us a pattern of salvation, but He's also given us a pattern of life. He expects us, church, listen to me. He expects us to be different. He said himself, the world will hate you as it has hated me. Because we are not a part of the world. We may be in the world, but we're not a part of the world. The problem is not being in the world. The problem is when the world gets in us. You know, a boat does really well in the water until that water gets in the boat. The Christian does well in the world if he follows God's pattern. He doesn't 
do so well if the world gets into him. Case in point, a man by the name of Demas, a preacher, a man who once shared the ministry with the Apostle Paul. Demas, in the latter days of Paul's life, Paul writes, Demas has forsaken me, having loved the present world. Demas loved the world and chose the world over God. Others do that. Peter warned, don't be like the hog that goes back to the slop and the mud. Don't be like the dog that returns to his vomit. That's what it's like going back into the world when you've been a Christian. The, cor the, the world is a corrupted, evil place. The world will not be saved. Those in the world will not be saved because they don't choose the values of God. They choose to live differently. How do you choose to live this morning? What decisions do you intend to make? Do you want to go to heaven? I'm going to say something. It's as easy as you want it to be. If you love God and keep His commandments, obey His will, obey the plan of salvation, you can be saved. And then you live faithfully up to the point that you take your last breath. Oh, there's going to, going to be some challenges. There's going to be times when we're going to blow it. But God is a forgiving God and we can always return according to 1 John 1. His blood keeps on cleansing us. Even when we blow it, we have to ask for forgiveness and confess that sin and it's forgiven. Isn't that awesome? Are you going to heaven? We've seen what we have to do to get there. But here's the beauty part of it. We can have the assurance. We can know that we're saved. There are so many people just in doubt of their salvation. They're in doubt because they haven't been in the Word and studied the Word to see what God says about salvation. John wrote in 1 John chapter 5, these things are written that you may know you're saved. Without a doubt. That's because there's a plan. And that plan is from God. God doesn't go back on His plan. That plan has been in existence for 2,000 years. It was first preached by the Apostle Peter and the eleven on the day of Pentecost. And it's been preached every Sunday since. It's been taught every day since. So this morning, if you've never obeyed that gospel, for the reasons that the Bible gives, and we want you to consider the invitation. Don't put off what you know you need to do. Christian, don't dilly-dally in the world. Get out of it. Set your values with God. The invitation is yours to stay the same.